these properties, these uh, uh, abstract objects that, that have to be there if you think about all the different mathematical relationships and descriptions and it, it becomes an infinite number of things and some have claimed that, that if all of these things are just there and, and the number is virtually infinite that if God is suddenly in this environment with all these infinite things around him he's sort of overwhelmed by these things and that the stuff that God creates is only a small fraction of the things that, that exist. Well, is that a problem? I wouldn't think so. The stuff that, the things that God creates will be very few in number compared with the number of abstract things uh, that, there, that there are. After all, in a universe like this, how many concrete things can we fit uh, into it? Um, if they don't overlap, uh, the, num the answer is, at most, the lowest infinite number. That is, the, the number of natural numbers, one, as many as there are natural numbers. That is, you can number each one of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, also, you have to assume that, uh, um, well, I said that you, you, you assume that they share no, the things that share no parts. Um, and there will be so many abstract things that there isn't even a number for them, not even an infinite right. uh, number. Um, but I don't see why the, that should be regarded as a limitation on God. It's simply a limitation on the number of concrete, non-abstract things that can coexist. And God would know all of these abstract things? I don't, I'd, I'd have to see an argument to con convince me that there was a difficulty mm. with that. that. I have seen arguments that purport to have that conclusion, but I don't find them convincing. Mm. So it doesn't trouble you that God is overwhelmed with all these abstract objects that he, he, is, uh, he finds himself with in, in, no, in, the, in their see, mutual eternal state? I don't see why there shouldn't be a mind that was capable of uh, offering complete and equal consideration to all those objects mm -hmm. at once. So if we go back to say, okay, what is there? What things really exist? Uh, how would you specifically answer the question from your perspective? I think that there are abstract things. Um, I would prefer to say that all abstract things were what I would call relations. Um, that is, um, they would be things that you could say, things that were true or false. Um, there would be things that you could say about things, such as that it's white. That's something that you can say about the Taj Mahal or the White House or the Washington Monument, truly, and you can say it of other things falsely. There are things that you can say about two things, such as that one is to the left of the other one. Uh, these would be uh, relations proper in the proper sense, the two term, two or more term uh, relations, that this one is between that one and the other one, uh, and so on. I would say those were all the abstract things, that okay. they were all relations of some sort. Uh, and besides those, there were the concrete things or substances, uh, things that have some sort of real existence that um, aren't abstract, that don't adhere in other things, but exist in their own right. Okay. Now, in these substantives, these concrete things, yeah. what, um, how, how can you subdivide that? Well, there might, for example, one subdivision might be material and immaterial. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I'm right in thinking that there is a God, for example, uh, he's an, he would be an immaterial or a non-physical substance. I think that we ourselves are physical uh, substances. Um, I think that uh, everything uh, we observe in the world is a, is a physical substance, although, I, as I indicated um, before in my earlier remark about chairs, sometimes I think the things that um, we think we're observing aren't really there. <laughs> but if there were a chair, it would be a material substance. If these things did add up to one thing, what they did add up to would be a material substance. So if this is not real... If these don't add up to something... Right, then uh, what, it's just its constituent parts that are, that are the real thing? Well, there isn't an it at all to be its constituent parts. There are just the constituent parts. Okay. In my view. Arranged in a certain so, way. So I'm not saying this is an illusion or a phantasm that you can put your... No, there's something there to resist your hand, but it's a lot of things resisting your hand. I'm just saying that the space that would be occupied by the chair, uh, if 
the chair existed is in fact not occupied by any one thing, but is collectively occupied by many, many, many things. So the, the lowest, whether it's a subdivision of an atom, a quark, whatever the most fundamental mm -hmm. thing exactly. is, this is a collection of a very large number arranged in a certain way, mm -hmm. but that's all it is. Mm -hmm. And the, there's not even an it to, even a, uh, to I, be that. There's I, just a they. I, I, okay, so it's, it's the plural, mm -hmm. it's the they. It's mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. 10 to the whatever number of mm -hmm. little parts that there, there we what's have. there that, that that's all there is mm -hmm. okay now you've also talked about the living organisms having some s special coherence together i think the material substances that we do see that really are parts of the world around us are all living organisms ones that have uh and um uh, in which the elementary particles are arranged in a certain sort of way such that they control the flow in and uh, flow out of matter there. I think that's the way things actually do manage to add up uh, to something. So all living things then are, 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 are a different kind of category than non-living things? Yeah, except that... They're composed course, of the same things. Uh, except, of course, that uh, if I'm right, the non-living things aren't composed of anything because they're not there. That is, I'm saying that the uh, atoms that compose me do add up to something, namely me, whereas the atoms that people say compose the chair don't compose the chair because there's no chair there to so, be composed. Well, what would be the difference if we knock out a sliver of the chair? Is the chair there if I take, you know, if you lose your finger, are if, you still if there? I, well, if there's no chair there, there's no, there's no question to be raised about whether it's still well, there after we knock the chip out. If you cut my finger off, obviously I'm still there. That is, if we were told, first we'll cut your finger off and then you, we'll torture you, <laughs> you would anticipate being tortured because right. um, you would expect still to be there. After, you wouldn't expect to cease to exist when your finger had been right. cut off. What's the fundamental differentiating thing between though me and this chair? Why? Why? Because we're both. There's no nothing in me that's not in the chair, right? I mean, we're all composed right. of the same the same things. Things. There's, there's no immaterial stuff that you're postulating. Okay, but. You keep asking the question in a way uh, that presupposes that the chair is there. Uh, uh, Ask it this way. What's the difference between these things and those things? Fine. Why do these things add up to something and those things don't? Because these things, I say, are doing kind of dance. You could call it a life. Um, they're continually, of course, drawing new members, new atoms into this dance, expelling old members, vast numbers uh, every second. Uh, half the atoms that composed my liver five days ago aren't there anymore. Right. Um, whereas the, this matter here, these, that's just stuck to, it just sits there stuck to each other. Um, I'm telling you, of course, the conclusion, um, the very definite statements I've been making make it sound like I regard this as self-evident. Uh, no, this is the this is the bottom line. You ask what I think. This is what I think, but I haven't told you why I think that. Do that quickly. <laughs> that would be very difficult to do. I can say a lot about that. I could write a book. Uh, <laughs> in fact, but, you have. Yes, in fact, I have. Um, but what I've asked I've asked people to do, perform some simple thought experiments, maybe with wooden blocks. You've had a lot of wooden blocks. What do you do to make them add up to something bigger? What can you do with them, moving them around? Is it enough to stack one on top of the other? Do you have to glue them together? Uh, might you, uh, in fact, uh, have to uh, cause them to merge seamlessly with each other? All these are different. All these different answers to the question, what do you do to some things to make them add up to a bigger thing, it can have very puzzling consequences. What I try to do um, in the book I wrote about this is to show that all the answers uh, that I've canvassed at least, but my own, have puzzling consequences that people shouldn't want to right. accept. So I haven't so much proved that mine is true uh, as proved that if um, indeed this is the whole array uh, of answers, if I haven't missed any, and all these others have these consequences that nobody would want to accept, then this is the one that's left over, and it's the one that seems the most plausible. And that is that atoms add up to something 
uh, when they are part of the, um, when they are arranged in the way, when their activity constitutes the kind of thing that we call a life, arranged in the way that constitutes a living organism. Uh, and that, then and only then. 